He's on? Yeah. He's trying to move too fast, though, still. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to move too fast. That's what you said before. Yep, All right. We have started it. However, right. we're waiting. Oh, I might need to get up. Although I did something new. They offered something new about co-hosts. Mm -hmm. So I invited Michael to it. So I'm hoping that I won't have to, like, get up there. And, and split the screen and stuff for him. Hopefully he'll be able to come in. Come on. Give me back my... Thank you. I mean, we didn't even... We haven't even touched on Christ and the law. <laughs> and, and <laughs> oh, Lord. And the fulfillment of the prophecies. Oh. Somebody's up there now. Who is that? Who is that? Oh. Michael's watching. Okay. Bring him on. There we go. You weren't able to just log on and start it in? No. Huh. I wonder what the point in having a co-host is then. I don't know. Maybe I can see the comments? I have no idea. You'll have to tell me. I cannot. It's not no, I cannot uh, see any comments right now. Options are few. I'm trying to pray. But where are you? I'm all churched out. Hurt and abused. What's left to do? Take me to the king. But I'm hoping between that and but my heart's torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone. Gaze upon your glory, sing to you a song. Please take me to the king. Thank you. Yep, I hear you. Couldn't hear the music? Well, no, we. <laughs> Was it too loud? No. All no. right. Along with it. Just a little bit. All right, all right. Oh, so it was a little too loud. Did you get a reverb? <laughs> your flow was right on time. I didn't want to distract you from your flow. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, hey, uh, well, it is time. It's time to turn down the amp, turn up the word. So, uh, Last week, in our last episode, we issued the challenge, read through Hebrews. Hopefully you read through Hebrews. Um, you read through Hebrews, Daniel? I read some of Hebrews. All right. Aaron? I read some of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, so we'll do a, do a little recap, and then we'll press into this the essence uh, what i think is the essence i mean we hit on the the meat of the renewed covenant when we got into jeremiah uh but i feel like this is this kind of gets more into essence as we talk about uh as we talk about jesus as the high priest of the covenant superior to uh to moses his ministries superior and then we find uh later on in 
in Hebrews about the, uh, the superiority of this renewed covenant and why it is superior. Um, okay. We'll talk about that. What's that? Brittany. Hey, Brittany. No, I cannot see comments. What? No, I cannot see comments or people joining. So I'm not sure what co-host does. I don't know. I, look it up. It's a knowable thing. What's co-host supposed to do? Maybe you got to grant me more rights. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Right, we were in Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2? We were in Hebrews. Uh, but as, so here's the thing. If we go deep into Hebrews, then we would probably spend uh, four more weeks and we still won't get to the, <laughs> we still won't get to. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, we'll kick it off. We'll just kind of do a survey of, of some of the key chapters in Hebrews. And then we're going to land. So we're going to land like a gymnast. We're going to. I just want to make there with huh? my survey of the covenants in general anyway. Well, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying we can't like go deeper like we did with the rest of the covenants in each chapter of Hebrews. Oh, yeah, no. That's, just... that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's pray and get started. Yes. Okay. All right. Anyway. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to join together, to feast on your word, and to just gain more, to grow in knowledge. Uh, please give us the heart to, to just continue to dive into your word. And every person that, that watches this or every person that doesn't watch, just give them a fervor for your word and just that that thirst to dive into it and really understand what it is that you have to say to them about you and about their lives in jesus name amen all right so last time you said we were where at two two roughly at two and ten halfway uh, okay as we were talking about brothers, you know, all being of the same, brothers not ashamed. Ah, uh, yes. I thought we got past that, but okay. Just, I know all that right. we're there. All right. So, uh, let's see. Did we, t okay, yeah, the warning to pay attention about not straying. So, we did talk about that. I do remember that. Uh, and it gets into the idea later on in, uh, chapter two uh, about Jesus being made fully human and the you know people say okay that that's good but what is what is the so what I think the so what is um, much like the you know much like the priests of old um, he was able to understand he's, he is able to understand our situation uh, it even says in here that he was tempted um, in in every way, just as we are. Uh, but unlike the uh, unlike the high priests of old, when they went to the and I'm probably skipping ahead here, but when the high priests of old went to the temple, uh, they actually had to offer they had to give offerings um, for repentance for their own sins as well as the sin of the people. Right. Um, whereas Yeshua, well, obviously no sin. So he just the offering for the people. Um, and so that's uh, when you look at that and you compare. So you look at, you know, uh, one of the first, uh, the first, the first, was he the first? Was there another? No. So when you look at Moses, right, um, Moses sinned, right? This is a this is a noble thing. He sinned, but he was still that, you know, in that role, uh, as did all the prisons. So he was the one that would go on that would mediate on behalf 
of the people. Um, but now we have a high priest that not only does he know what it's like to, uh, to be tempted, but he also didn't sin. And so he's able to offer himself as that perfect sacrifice. Um, comments on that before we press forward. And that's really jumping into uh, three, actually, that part where it talks about Jesus being greater than Moses. You're coming in low. Uh, so something came up last night in, in Bible study. We was in the book of John. Mm -hmm. And that in John 1 where it says, He came to his own, and his own received him not. I was looking at one of my commentaries. And mm -hmm. it kind of what was said here about between Moses and Jesus when it says that Moses was faithful in all his house, verse five and chapter three Moses was faithful as a for a testimony in verse six for Christ son over his own house whose house we are if we hold fast to confidence what a commentary last night had to do with when he came into his own his own received him not it had to do with the fact that he it wasn't as if he was a stranger coming to visit it was as right. if coming home the same right. that he came in, when he came and presented himself, he did so as one who was literally legally coming home. Right. And they came and they didn't, mm -hmm. re, they didn't receive him. So right. Was, That's he, the scene in Nazareth. In the house, he was coming in as right. son of the house. Right. Yeah. Right. Is that the scene they're, 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 they're referring to, the scene where he goes, uh, where he goes home to Nazareth, and and they're like, oh well, you're just, you know, aren't you the son of that carpenter? And so then he then he leaves because I mean that's, um, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. that's part of it right there. But uh, yeah. let me see, uh, what was it? John one one little bit about a prophet is not without honor, save in his own house, right? I mean that's kind of the John, you know. He says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And then it says, no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten which is in the bosom of the Father has declared him. Uh, wait a minute, bag up. Bag up, bag up. Yeah. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and beheld the glory. When I read the commentary about that, mm -hmm was speaking about the fact that he was when he came it was as if he was actually just coming home not right. as a stranger to the people not as a stranger to the covenants not as a stranger to uh, the nation but coming home as a son right right and so yeah well uh, that just highlights what it said in Hebrews 3 and 6. It says, the right. Christ was over his own house. He was the son of the house, and he came in. Right, right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jump uh, as we uh, flash forward to um, chapter 4. Uh, we did mention this uh, about the idea of a the promise of entering God's rest still stands. Uh, make sure that, you know, we don't fall short of it. Let, let, uh, be careful that none of the, that none of you have be found to have fallen short of it. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. so when we think about the rest, when I saw the, when, you know, the rest, of course, you, you know, immediately you go back to, the initial rest, the seventh day, the, the first Sabbath. Which, um, another, the following verse. Right, right. Um, 
but then uh, there's also i think a a reflection to the the covenant as it's laid out um let's see are we i believe that's the davidic covenant yeah safety and refuge yeah. yes yes so yeah one of the uh, one of the promises is you know peace you know, this this idea of this everlasting peace uh, and then if you go forward into the one that we viewed in Jeremiah um, I mean it doesn't explicitly talk about rest there um, but it does talk about that that it does talk about forgiveness, remembering sin no more, and this ubiquitous knowledge of God. Those are the elements that are laid out in Jeremiah. Uh, but uh, you'd have to go back to the Davidic covenant where it talks about the, uh, the rest. But we're not even to the elements. We're not even to the point where it spells out because it specifically does in Hebrews point you right back to, uh, to Jeremiah as you get into six or seven but we'll get there momentarily uh, yeah um looking at verse eight and four um for if joshua had given them rest and not that complete rest uh, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, so that anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Uh, specifically gets into Jesus being the great high priest uh, in 14 uh, and and further on but let's see four and then you go into five it talks about the characteristics of the high priest the idea that the high priest is selected from among the people um, it's not an honor that you bestow upon yourself it's something that is bestowed upon you just as uh, Jesus didn't show up and say, hey, I'm your high priest. It was it's actually God the Father that, um, that's, um, that bestows that honor to him, as we see in five and, uh, 5 and 5 and 6. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son today, I have become your father. Uh, and he says in another place, you are a priest uh, forever in the order of Melchizedek. So, I mean, we could and go then ahead. Again in 10. And then again in, in 10. Yes. Uh, so, you know, when, when, and y'all please jump in here, but whenever I think of and whenever I hear about this, this priest in the order of Melchizedek, Normally, it's people want money. Sure. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, I need you to back up and say again. <laughs> okay. Whenever I hear somebody talking about a priest according to the order of Melchizedek, it's about money. They want money. Either that or they Except don't want to come up under the uh, authority of uh, someone else that they're, they're rejecting mm. the establishment of, of, of. Well, that one I can go with because Melchizedek is one of the first that's first mentioned, mentioned as a priest of the Most High God. With, right. mon with monotheism. Right. Yes. He's recognized so he as one of the first recorded monotheistic priests. Yes. So I can get with not under the standard, but money? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this goes back 
Okay, so this goes back to when Abraham was going on on the on his way. He comes across Melchizedek, and he gives him a tenth of all you know of his possessions. And so now, well, that's you know that tells you you got a tithe, and you know according according to Melchizedek, you got a tithe, you got a tithe, and so that. I mean, okay, true, right? I, it's an example, but I'm not sure that that's the piece that that's talking about here. Not a principle no. expressed in that particular passage. No. No. This <laughs> is a, the everlasting nature I, of, go ahead. I think that goes more to the fact that Abraham recognized Mechazeldeck's piety in um, authority right. as, on, as a believer of yeah. God and therefore yeah. in order for him to continue his ministry Abraham paid his tithe right. so that Melchizedek could continue not right. I mean the, 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 the requirement to tithe is actually in the Mosaic Covenant Mm-hmm. Which is way later, you know. Right. Later. So. Right. For five I'm years. just telling you that I've heard it used a lot as, you know. So what what do I hear? I hear Malachi. That's that's one. I don't know. Um, bring all your ties into the storehouse. Oh. Uh, you really don't hear. <laughs> Even even Messiah talks about give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Yes, yes. I'm not saying it's wrong to tithe. Okay, break break disclaimer. I tithe. We tithe. Yeah. I'm not saying. I'm saying that. <laughs> okay, maybe so, I on more on the people who are prosperity preachers go that direction with this. They yes, yes. Okay. But wrong. that is so. <laughs> But that, I think that's, is that an important element? Yes, but I think the element and the perspective to me that I get when I hear about, now that I've been studying a bit more about Melchizedek is what's, you know, what's, who's Melchizedek's father? What priesthood is he under? What, you know, when did he die? Do we know any of these? We don't know, right? And so to me, that is more indicative. I mean, we know who Yeshua's father is, but it's more indicative of that, that everlasting nature of that priesthood. That you, I, you can't find where Melchizedek is buried. You can't, you can't point to that tomb. You can't. Um, and so that's one of the important elements that when I think about being, you know, about, Jesus being a priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, that's where um, that's where my mind goes. Um, but the other thing it does, um, and this is uh, so that goes a little bit further. I think at that point you're in chapter seven of Hebrews, um, where we can we can biblically see that Jesus is really under a different priesthood. So you know we think about the Levitical uh, the Levitical priesthood and, and these different priesthoods throughout time. Jesus is actually not under that priesthood. He's in a different order, a, right. a different priesthood. And I think that's the main principle that the writer of Hebrews is bringing out. That when he, mm. up, he wants his readers, because again, this is the, the Hebrews, he wants them to recognize the fact that, okay, Christ, Yeshua, is not in the same, he's, a, he's our high priest, but he's not in the same order as right. the Aaronic priest. He's more in the order of. Melchizedek, which is uh, a completely separate right. entity, all in, it, in and of itself. Because in, right. in 
his of it, that's all he, you got this one picture of him in right. scripture. That's right. it. And that's it. <laughs> right. And and I mean, it's, it's said n numerous times that in, in Hebrews about, you know, him being, Melchizedek being, you know, this, this, this pious guy. King of righteousness. Righteousness. Right. And I agree that we're trying, that, that the author is to remind us, like you said, comparing Yeshua to Melchizedek out from underneath this, this corrupt line, or the line that has been co become corrupt. corrupted right. between the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's trying to remove that because it's sort of like the Hawaiians that turned away from from their polytheistic ways without actually being taught anything. It was accounted to him on faith. Mm -hmm. It was accounted to him because he trusted. Not that he had all of these teachings to go with it, although Yeshua does, but Melchizedek is, is presenting this image of, of this faith and this trust and being the odd man out. So again, here's Yeshua, again, kind of this odd man out of the line of the, out of the line, out of the tribe, you know, right. but with all of this knowledge and, and, and authority that, you know, such that Abraham gave, paid Melchizedek his tithe, that same idea here that he, the Messiah has that authority to demand this of us. And I think that's why it's he's used as an illustration is to take away the argument yeah. that the other Hebrews would bring. So yeah. Saying, well, he wasn't in the trunk. He's not up there. Uh, exactly. Right. He's, he's not, not this, this line and he's this line. Yep. You know, and they they trying to pull in yep. um but excuses, did. And then he'd be like, wait a minute, what about the people there? Yeah. Right. So somebody got on 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 we were having a discussion about baptism and being Methodist, they baptize them when they're young kind of idea. And that's done way before the age of, you know, teens. And I'm like, but Messiah was 30. Yeah. But we, but Messiah was 30, you know, right. it's, like you're saying, it's that yeah. same idea. It, it so, I, and it, as you were mentioning that, I, I thought of another reason that it is important. So it's, because of, you know, people would have known about the interaction between Abraham and Melchizedek. They would have known about that. They would have understood that. And they would know that, you know what, we, we've never come across another right. priest like him. That, along that order. Right. But we know about that priest. Until until right that's right but we but we do know about that priest and so i think it's it's very instructive that that is in you know that is in the the old testament it's in the torah right that they would know like yeah right. okay melchizedek i i get that and so that to me kind of speaks to uh just the continuity You got bugs attacking you? I thought you said it was cold. I thought you said it was cold enough out there. I thought it was cold enough, but it ain't quite. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Exciting. That ought to work. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll work. <laughs> there. There. Yeah, so so I think that's very instructive to to anyone that would come out of a um, you know the the um, the Hebrew culture that they would understand that piece um, because and Paul Messiah all of them they always went to the synagogue first and right. said repeatedly to the Jew first and then the, the Gentile. Jew. That this stuff and the and and that it was given to them to bring the Jews to jealousy, and you can't be jealous of something that you don't know about. 
That's right. That's right. It's a good point. It's a good point. Um, moving into six. Um, we were already begin- in- <laughs> What happened? Back to six. <laughs> were we back to six again? <laughs> you took us back to six. Well, I did only because there was that we already talked about. Okay, anyway, so if you want to know about six, read six, but I would say the beginning is is very instructive, and that's where we can look at the idea of maturing. It's about maturity. We're, We're, okay, let us move beyond elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, laying on of hands, and resurrection uh, of the dead and eternal judgment, uh, and God permitting, we will do so. So that to me, I love that passage of scripture because it's like these are, you know, for for those that remember your your math class, these are those, uh, these are those, um, what do they call those things? Not the postulates, but it's basically, these are the facts. These are the known things. Figure in the walk of a believer, all these things that it talks about in uh, verses one through three, those that's that's basic, as they say. That that's that's basic. Right. They, mentions later about being, you know, milk versus meat. Yes. You know, so that's right. Uh, and he's he's going over again the fact that, and this is a problem that we have. Is, <laughs> right. Yeah. But this is the problem that we have with the church now today is that too many of our Christians, of our believers, are stuck learning, you know, the foundations that, you know, trust God and and about all of those little things, except that they've never actually learned it. We've forgotten foundations. And so we get beyond milk Christians because they haven't learned the foundations. Right. Right. Well, through... 14 and whatever. One of the things I liked about that particular passage is I learned about that word babes. When yeah. It says in verse 13, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, so he's still a babe. That word babe, talking about nephios, and, and it, it literally means somebody like a toddler. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, right. still here, but 50 years old, something ain't right. Yeah. Right. Well, thought you were taught ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you the very first principles all over again you need milk mm-hmm. not food right right and unfortunately we have up there that are milk yeah that's true that's true and so we spent a, a little and god is love then you've not Pastor Randy mentioned this last night. He mentioned that he had watched the sermon by someone else and that throughout the entire sermon, not one time was Christ mentioned, not one time was, mm. you know, salvation, the blood, not, nothing, the cross, not, nothing connected to the gospel was mentioned. And he That's was right. encouraging because when you look on social media, when you look on YouTube, when you look at some of these uh, quote-unquote Christian stations, the majority of what you hear are social political gospels. Right. False gospels. Mm-hmm. Gospel. They're socially right. connected. They're politically connected. But right. they're biblically connected. But you right. don't even actually mention Messiah or Christ to pass the knowledge. Right. But if you're still, like I said, if you're still stuck on rainbows and sunshine and God is love, and mm-hmm. that's all you got, that's right. all. Yeah. Right. That's, that's all milk, because you can't give to me the reason why. You can't, I mean, it, 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 you know, to have the faith of a child such as these, you know, that's initially, yeah. that's the milk. Those are the initial. You can't, you can't mature and then teach others who are on milk. You can't bring them along. You can't disciple them along. If right. you never get to the meat, if you can't ever get beyond. Right. The, the super basic, the super right. basic. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. 
so we uh, obviously we've been spending a lot of time talking about the uh, the priesthood um, and the idea of a priest. We talked a little bit about maturity, but here's where we jump into chapter eight. Chapter eight, uh, the high priest of a new covenant, and here's why I think the discussion about the and, and y'all of course correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here, but here's why I think the discussion about a high priest is important because early on we talked about one of the elements of covenant being the sacrifice being the blood right and so throughout the bible when we think about the priests one of their you know okay so they they offer counsel um like nathan did to uh to david um they do the cleansing and, and all these things but one of the big things was they were the ones to go and and present those sacrifices and only the the um, the high priest one time a year was able to go you know into the holy of holies and and so that's why when we think about covenant and that connection i think it's important to understand the role of the priest which is why i was like you know what let's kind of step through hebrews so that we can see that piece so we can look at it from that angle as we um you know as we stick it and stretch because that's what they do in um gymnastics right <laughs> that we get into this this uh the high that happens too oh, just for the mention man this is the perfect what? time to talk about that this is when that yeah. This is when that high priest goes into the Holy of Holy bearing the bo the blood of mm. after he's let the scapegoat go and then right. So here we are him going in behind to offer the sac you know to offer the blood of the sacrifice. Mm. You know and and here we're talking about needing like you said earlier the high priest had to wash, had to offer his own sacrifices. He mm -hmm. had to wash. He had to do all of these things in preparation. To offer sacrifice on behalf of everybody else. Right. right. Whereas said, Messiah didn't need to do all of that. Right. He didn't offer the sacrifice on his behalf before. Right. Had no need of that. So you're right in that, you know, needing, but you have to understand the, 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 the symbolism of the high priest going behind the curtain and sprinkling yeah. blood and if the bells stop chiming or waiting for him to come out, mm -hmm. our, 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 our sacrifice was accepted. You know, if you don't understand those fundamental foundational things right and yeah besides you can't, you can't understand Messiah. you can't even understand some of the current events that are taking place right now in israel right I mean, with the right. red and, and and the temple uh institute put you know trying to uh they got the red heifers over there trying to uh examining them now to see if they're pure enough to to sacrifice so that they can have the ashes for purification of the water and everything. They're doing that right now, and people have no clue. Plus, we're in the year 5780 whatever. So, I mean, we're we're inching up on our millennial rain time frame here, too. Yeah. So, it's a lot and so speaking of that, and then I want to I want to keep pushing, but um, Matthew 27, 51. So we talk about the the high priest entering into the Holy of Holies. Um, but then we say, okay, this, I'm just reading real quick off the of Bible. Uh, at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn two from top to bottom. The yep. earth quaked and the rocks were split. Right. And it was 10 feet tall or whatever. You know, I mean, it was big. Yes. Thick, 
you know, all of those things. And then, like you said, the rock split and the, the, the one of the miracle things that most don't know is that the Ark of the Covenant was not in the temple. Mm. It was mm. in, it was underneath the Mount of Calvary. Yeah. So when the rock split, mm -hmm. his blood dripped through. Wow. Feet. Oh, wow. 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 That's so, good. You need to put that picture up. You need to find that picture. You need to find that portrait and put that up. That's good. That's good. Somebody would have to draw. Europe. Yeah, Europe. Europe. <laughs> Somebody would have to no, that's good. You know, sort of like the lamb and Christ that we had for Passover, um, mm -hmm. the you know the the superimposed. But mm. sure, yeah, yeah. That blood of that perfect lamb. Now it wasn't right. the day, of, but still, right. the idea right. there is that the high priest, you know, the the quote unquote new high priest, is the perfect blood was on the right. just like. It had been done for 3,000 years before. Right, right. And, and I, I think the other thing that, that the veil being torn in two, I mean, do you feel like that is another just like concrete evidence of the changing of the order? Yes. Yeah. The yes. changing of the Once, order of things. Only one man was ever allowed behind there. Right, right. And that was only yeah. one year. Yeah. And veil being torn allows people more ready access to. Access, yes. Also, I mean, think about it. Moses had to wear a veil after coming down off right. the mountain. That's right. You know, um, even the tablets were put into the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Which you couldn't even touch it mm -hmm. it was it was better for it to hit dirt than for you to touch it because you would die you know but we didn't mm -hmm. they, just, they didn't get to see the, the the stones you know all right. day or even his rod the manna all of that stuff was placed in mm -hmm. and then closed yep. so you're there's a barrier so the tearing of that massive piece of wool woven wool and linen being torn like that, I right. mean, it's hard to pull off your shirt right, right now. Yeah. You know, right. in movies, they actually cut it in places so that the guy can tear it, right? You can't right. even your own shirt. Think about tearing something that's nine inches thick. Right. Yeah. It's that's absolute physical barrier to God. And this is said, the, the, the destruction of that barrier says, I am no longer separated from you. Right. There's no right. Um, segregation. segregation. Yep. Right. Right. On the wall. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. There's so many ways. Yeah. Um, this wall. Yeah, bring this right. wall down. And, it's down. It's and so speaking of, speaking of changes, right? So let's now go to, so that's great as we look at chapter 8. And seven, so the high priest of a new covenant. Uh, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. Uh, Let's go back to six. Uh, six. Okay, I was going to go back further, but okay. Well, you're probably right. All right. So, all this, I, I could start from the beginning. Okay, so now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a, a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve in a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses 
was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as uh, superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, so if you were wondering what was wrong with the, the old covenant, um, Played out. it wasn't God's part. <laughs> it, it wasn't God's part. It was the people. It was the people couldn't live up to their end of the bargain. Uh, but God found fault with the people and said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant uh, with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them declares the Lord this is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time declares the Lord uh, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people my people no longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This all comes from Jeremiah 31. <laughs> all comes from Jeremiah 31. If it's, as I was to say, if it sounds familiar, that's because we read it two weeks ago. Yep. That's exactly where that's from. And again, um, he's, when he wrote this, he's writing to uh, the Hebrews as a whole. And he's right. taking back to their scriptures and using their the, the scriptures the word that they actually have to say okay look this is not something that was unforeseen this is not right. something you should not have known was coming you should have known that this was in the works because you were told ahead of that right so then right. He's nine and he's talking about well he ends eight with now there's a new, that means there's an old, that something is go going to go away. Mm -hmm. So this is where we do have a lot, we tend to have a lot of problems in that people think that it says on its way to vanishing. Mm -hmm. Not that That's it's right. gone. And right. that too many people say, well, God, Messiah has fulfilled the prophecies. He's come, so everything else is gone. And except it hasn't, because we're not on the millennial reign. We're right. still here on earth doing our thing. So you point him back to Hebrews 8 going, it ain't finished yet. It's not over. Right. No, you're right. You're right. And even if you go to, uh, yeah, 13, by calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. Right. And say it's disappeared. It says it will soon disappear. You can still drive an old car today, right? My version, my version here says in the process of aging. In the process of aging, right? Uh, and so when we go back and we say, okay, um, at some future point, he's going to write his laws on our minds and hearts. Everybody, you're not going to have to do missionary work because everybody's just going to know. So I, I feel like that, that time lines up with a future date. And so until that time, I think you're right. There is still, you know, I, I have this, uh, you know, this conversation with uh, well, some people that I know where they say, well, you know, you don't really have to pay attention to the uh, to 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 the Old Testament, I say, okay, which one of the Ten Commandments you want to do away with? <laughs> which one is it okay? <laughs> right? God created the light. <laughs> right. Well, so there's that too. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel like some ways. Well, yeah. Um, old covenant, but don't want to deal with none of the rest of it. I'm like, hold up. 
If you don't grab part of it, you might, you, you're making yourself a debtor to all of it. And that, and that's exactly what Paul tells us. Is if that's where you're going to go, then you got to take all of it. Right. He straight right. up says it. So nine then goes on and describes all of the pieces of the tabernacle of the Mishkan and, 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 and talks about who can go where and what the things were. And, um, and he spells out, he, I mean, he, he does it himself teaching people, this is the old and this is how it relates to the new. Don't, right. you know, I, I've been showing you all this time. That's what he's saying. I've showed right. you, you've done this, or every time you've done that, this is what it means. This is what it means. For if the shadow, for if the Torah has in it a shadow of the good things to come. Right. Yeah. 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 So there we are. We stuck it, we stretched the new, the new covenant, right? So we, we took it back to Jeremiah, but I can't really, I can't really stop right now until we go to Matthew 26 and 28. So yes, we talked about the priest. We talked about, you know, the, the sacrifice. We talked about this, this covenant, this covenant relationship, this, this bond um, that we have that God has graciously made with us. But then we go to Matthew 26 and 28. And let's see if my... Uh, Ooh, let's go there too. Only because I, I, we've been doing this whole juxtaposition and this, the this almost parallel of Yeshua and and Moses. And so I mentioned it last week, but we got to go back to the sprinkling of the blood. We got to go back to Moses sprinkling blood on people. Um, Wait. Before we sprinkle blood on people, we need to talk about Matthew 5. All right, go. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and 17. Okay. Actually, you have to, yeah, that, that, that'll work. Mm -hmm. Don't think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to complete. I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not a unit or a stroke shall pass from the Torah. Not until everything that has happened has happened. Or everything that must happen has happened. So whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and teaches will be called great. For I tell you that unless your righteousness is far greater than that, you will certainly not enter. So he's saying, don't forget about all this other stuff. He's That's saying, right. it's yeah. not yet. Right, right. It's not a done deal. It's not, I mean, that piece of it, our, our work. Uh, he's telling us what this new, the, the renewed covenant is. He's telling us that, but at the same time, he's like, you got to keep on doing this other stuff until. Right. right. And so then you go to your sprinkling of the blood and... All right. So in Exodus 24, uh, we'll start with 6. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They responded... We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. And in 8, Moses then took the blood 
sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. So then... So then you flash forward to Matthew 26. And uh, we'll start with 27. And this is probably familiar to the, anybody that's taken uh, communion. Or Passover. Or Passover. Well, I said communion because this is the because the uh, the Passover um, that's in a different order. It's reversed. Right, but the but this all took place during Pesach. Yeah. Yes. No, I agree. I agree. I just yeah. Okay, got it. Um, then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, "Drink from it, all of you." This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so we've been talking about covenants, and here we start with the, you know, we look at the Mosaic covenant, which is obviously, you know, a seminal covenant and as we talk about the relationships we talk about the, you know so that's really talking about the the uh the commandments the 613 mitzvot that's what he read to them so even though it's like you know one sentence here it took a little bit longer than one sentence for moses to read but anyway he had already they had already agreed to take the take it before the yeah. they, right so, right but yes go uh, ahead and then we, you know, we, we kind of final approach was in Hebrews, you know, final approach to, to this landing in, in Matthew um, was in Hebrews where we find out that, yeah, the, the old, uh, the, the, the covenant, the original covenant was not, it was not good enough. Why? Because one of the parties to that covenant being us was not good. Uh, we couldn't hold up to it. We couldn't live up to these. And then we saw in in Jeremiah that the covenant. And we saw it again in Hebrews that this covenant is one sided. It's God saying a lot of I will, I will. Not you do, not what, not I will if. Just, I will. And he seals it himself with his only son. And he tells us, this is my blood of the covenant. So this is that, you know, that better covenant. You know, the covenant that, yeah, we're, we're not, we weren't good enough to live up to the terms of the, the old covenant, the original covenant. And so now here's this better covenant for us. And so when you think about covenant relationship with God, when you think about God's covenant relationship with us, it's important to know not only the covenant uh, that is made, well, that God makes with us. I think that's the proper language of it. Um, with Christ as the mediator, with Jesus as the mediator, it's important to understand the history of all those covenants. And as we kind of walk through, we can kind of see like, yeah, there, there was other covenants. And through every single one of those covenants, God is trying to reconcile the world unto himself. You were going to say that? Were you going to say that? You're going to say something pretty similar, right? Through all of them, he's trying to. What's that? What's that? I can't. Same word. Yes, same word. Awesome. Uh, so throughout, he's trying to reconcile us to him. Whether it's, okay, I'll say it, whether it's Adam or whether it's. 
So, so every single one of those, he is trying to bring us to him. He's trying to bring us to him and giving us these opportunities and saying, you know what, treat, you know, treat your fellow man right. You know, be obedient, do all these things. And, you know, we went through a whole chart on, you know, the covenant, the, the, let me read through the elements that we talked about, because I think those are pretty good to think about as you keep going through. We talked about the state of play, what was happening at the time of each of these covenants. We talked about who the parties to the covenants were. Um, what were the promises of each of these covenants? What instructions did we have? We find that a lot of those, uh, especially if they're unilateral covenants, it's we don't have a we don't have an active role we are recipients of it um and then we look at the um you know what are the conditions of the covenant uh, you know contrast with the state of play like is there an or else no not not in all cases um what are the signs of the covenant what's the length of the covenant and uh, of course we love those those everlasting and unconditional covenants. Uh, and then what is the evidence of blood? And we go from that first one where, you know, if we look at Adam, there's an animal skin, that means that some animal had to die. And so there was that blood. And then we flash forward to today where we talked about the blood of Jesus and wow. And so we landed. So that's covenants. Y'all have any closing thoughts? You just took all of my closing thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was good. This was good. Um, and, you know, as Aaron said earlier, we did really kind of do a survey of the – we didn't go, like, deep. We kind of went deep, but really for the past – what's this been, two months? Yeah. At least. We've been talking about covenants for two months, and this is awesome. Why? Because um, it lets you know that, and Aaron and I were talking about this earlier in this earlier this week. You don't have to read through the Bible in a year. No. You might study, you might meditate on one book of the Bible for a year. I remember we were uh, we were working at a. Uh, uh, doing Bible studies at a um, at a rehab place, and for about so we met once a week, and so I would say for about twelve weeks, we were just in the Book of James. <laughs> I mean, we just couldn't get past more than one or two verses, just you know, talking about the implications for people's lives and everything. And so, it's okay to not read to not speed read through the Bible. Aaron, you were going to say something. I've done 10 weeks or eight weeks on nothing but the Lord's prayer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One or two lines a week because you went that deep. You went into verb usage and you went into, you know, all of that, that stuff. So, I mean, we did go way more in depth in covenant than a lot of places have and we did it much much more um extensively than even my other study because the the other study that i have by precepts which is a fantastic study don't get me wrong but they only even touched yeah. on like three or four and of right. all and then you know but it was all pointed to and i'm not saying that all of the covenants don't point to but we we did we did doing a survey of each one pointed out all of those things, but we did each one. We didn't just do one or two or three, you know, right. call it good. I mean, we did take the time. Could we take even more? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yes. And, and like I just said, uh, we took 10 weeks just to do our Lord, our, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We did 10 weeks on that. So, right. like, yeah, we were talking about, because I had gotten the question from a kid at school, how, you know, how many times have I read the Bible? Mm. And, you know, the question was, well, straight through? 
once, maybe twice, but have I read all? Uh, uh, all of it? Yeah. I've well, probably read all of it, but, you know. The very time, I mean, they floor just sitting down and just going verse to verse, line to line, you know, all from Genesis to maps. No. Uh-uh. There's I've never done that. I, no, I admit it. Yeah. I have never done I've that. Never, I've never been able to mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, the spirit will always arrest me in one particular spot. And squirrel. And, and then next thing, and now it's the connection thing. I'll yeah. start being connected to other things that have gone before. And that was the good thing about this study is we kept, we were able to see how this connects to that. How this connects to that. You go forward, but you always look backwards to see where it connects it. Right. And that's the beautiful thing. And that's what grounds you. That's where your foundation lies. You can get, yeah. You firm foundation and you understand why you believe what, what you really? believe. right right and as opposed to being able to say i read the bible hopefully we can all say i understand covenants just a little bit better <laughs> and because i understand covenants better i can understand god's relationship with us better you know what's interesting is i was just watching uh madam Se uh madam secretary okay mm. And there was a debate between a poet and a physicist hmm. and how the physicist doesn't see the beauty, doesn't stop to see. And he says, wait, I understand the cell and the nucleus. And I understand that, you know, <laughs> plants change their color in order to attract insects, which means that insects can see color, which means I now understand more than what you saw on the surface with right. your poetry, whereas going through and not doing our verse a day to keep the devil away, you know, but actually in depth does give us, I mean, we started with milk. Mm -hmm. We started with the faith of babes, yep. but we, we, you're stepping into that maturity level into that, into that, you know, I know why I have faith. And right. therefore, I'm unshakable. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. That's good. Right. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this study. Uh, if you enjoyed it, share it. Share it, share it, share it. Um, and uh, please uh, be with us in, in prayer as we contemplate this, this, next, uh, this next adventure. Um, in terms of this Bible study, uh, I mean, what was the, I know there was a couple of things, right? Uh, there was one on, um, sin, sin came up. I know sin that, so maybe we'll start, maybe we'll just have, have a, a couple of weeks on sin. What, what is, what is sin? <laughs> um, sin bad, sin, you know, well, not sin good. No, sin bad, uh, not the bad. comedian. Idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe we'll go there and then I think there was another one that somebody wanted us to do. What's that? There was definitely another one. There was another one that was on, um, it was on the apologetics line, the, the line of, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, definitely. Yeah, there was, there was, but it wasn't apologetics broadly, it was I'll look back through the notes and see. If you look on your chat, I think they'll. Um, I think it's on there. If not, it, it will come back to me, and we'll get to those within the next couple of weeks. Um, also, uh, let's see. Just a reminder: um, Thanksgiving's coming up, and you know, buy a turkey, put it in your freezer if you catch one on sale. Uh, maybe help out at a soup kitchen or a pantry or something. Uh, just you know do something for for somebody and you know if you're somebody that that needs something don't be afraid to reach out because there's lots of people out there that that do want to help um and also um sure i'll i'll announce it i'll put it out there um aaron and i were talking about how to construct a full-on virtual church like how do we how do we do that what's the format um, how do we how do we make everything from 
your Bible study, which we got a Bible study. I think we're, I think we're good there. Um, but you know, your, your Sunday mornings, if you will, and all the way to, to youth groups and all that. So we're, we're thinking about that, that project, that process, and it's going to be, you know, it'll take a while to build, but we're going to build it. Um, we will need to establish a, uh, a nonprofit organization in order to, to make that happen. So we'll need a board. We'll need a board of directors. So if you want to be on the board, uh, let Aaron know. And this isn't something that's just come up in this last week, though. We, we've had this kind of, dis we've had these discussions on and off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. And then, uh, yeah. And so maybe, maybe as an outgrowth, uh, maybe this becomes the, the online church becomes the nucleus of the, the greater vision, which is to help folks um, with, uh, with, with the, the kingdom's, kingdom's glory. Glory. Uh, Ron just put up a note here. Um, I didn't know that he was watching because it never came up that he was. But anyway, he said, talk to me about that from a technology perspective. I might be able to help. Sweet. <laughs> Hi, Ron, by the way. Hey, Ron. Oh. <laughs> me. So anyway, yes, we've been talking about ministry in general. Um, but. Thinking about database. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll share something with that. Yo. So anyway, yes, it's uh, the, the, the holidays are coming. And please remember your brother. Yep. As in your neighbor. Your human brother yeah. and um, help where you can and with what you can. <laughs> Ron says, surprise, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, help where you can, you know, even if it's just taking a couple of, you know, cans of corn, whatever you can, if you can manage to do one can of something a week. Yeah, that's good. Just that one can. Yeah. Can it will help. So and oh, by the way, you can double your contribution of one can if you go to like Aldi or someplace like that where, where cans of, but I'm just cans saying, of almost any almost anybody, not everybody can, but almost anybody can get one can. So Yeah. All right. Well good. Let's uh and we didn't even go that much over. I knew we were gonna go over because I wanted to wanted to uh, to stick it and stretch, and I believe we did. So announcements took us over. We were we were pretty much on time. Otherwise, <laughs> all right. Well, cool. Well, uh, Daniel, want to pray us out? I sure will. Sweet. As always, we thank you for your grace and favor that's allowed us to come together once again to open up your words to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to the covenants which you have placed in the earth for our understanding. As I pray, as always, I pray that the eyes of our understanding have been enlightened, that those who are weak in spirit have received strength, that uh, your spirit will continue to lead and guide us in each and every endeavor that we do for the praise, honor, and glory of your holy name. And it's in the precious name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 All uh, right, y'all. I'm going to get some sleep. And y'all take care. Care, peoples.